Hey there, nation, and welcome to the show where we help you to play miniatures wargaming on a budget. It is I, Commander Cheapskate, and we are back with another episode of Into the Darkness, which is our series of Space Station Zero battle reports dedicated to our solo play campaign. And this is battle report number 10, and this one is a greenhouse challenge. So my crew does have my work cut out for me. This time around, i got to maneuver through the depths of Space Station Zero and fight plant-based mutants, which have now sprouted up in the bottom depths of the uh, space station. I have to worry about those guys, as well as poisonous mushrooms that are spouting out spores everywhere, as well as tar pits as well. So that being said, real quick, we'll play some background music real fast. As the music is playing, we will show you guys photos of the battlefield. We'll also talk about the scenario rules, as well as show you our rosters for my crew, Thundrix Profiteers. So that being said, Let's get this battle report on a roll. Challenge number 11, the greenhouse. This bay is a stark contrast to all of the areas you've explored thus far. This bay is teeming with life. It was likely a greenhouse for algae and other potential plant life, though without care it has grown out of control. As you move through the underground brush, you see movement as strange creatures crawl forth to meet you. So the scenario rules for this one, ladies and gentlemen, is pretty straightforward. I have three main challenges that I have to take on. The first one are mutant plant mutants, and the second is poisonous spore mushrooms, and the very last one are tar pits. Now for the plant uh, mutants, these are xenobiology, so these ones are fighters. They have nine life, six movement, four combat, four reaction, as well as one intelligent. And the plant mutants are armed with twisted vines, which gives them a plus one to their combat score for close combat. At the same time, the plant mutants also have the poison ability. It states whenever a crew member is damaged by a plant mutant as part of a combat challenge attack, that crew member must immediately make a life save of four. If this test fails, the crew member reduces their combat stat by one until the end of the encounter, and the effect is cumulative. Another major challenge I also got to deal with as well as poisonous spore mushrooms, and pretty much what happens is that every single time I make a combat challenge test attack, I have to roll a d12. On a result of a 9+, plus, a nearby mushroom has been disturbed and emits its spores. So that crew member and all crew members within 3 inches of them must make a reaction save 3. If a crew member fails, they suffer damage equal to the amount by which they fail the test. And at the beginning of also very turn, whenever I move a character, I have to test for tar pits. Uh, pretty much what it is is that there's hidden tar pits spread throughout the entirety of the battlefield. And any time a crew member moves that turn, roll a, D, a D12. On a result of a 10 plus, the crew member has stumbled into a tar pit. Now the crew member must make a reaction save four. On a failed test, the crew member's move stat is reduced to zero and their combat stat is reduced by one. They may repeat this reaction challenge test on their activation each turn and it does require an action to do so. If I do manage to uh, get out of it, I get to move as normal, but until then though, I'm still stuck in that tar pit. Now for the rewards on this one, um, I can of course get some rewards on this one. All I gotta do is take an intelligence challenge test of four, and if the check is passed, you may get some antitoxin for your crew's equipment, and if your crew does have a secondary agenda, uh, the rescue as well as the medicine secondary agenda will kick in for rewards on this one as well. The challenge ends of course once I defeat all the plant mutants, and then from there I can move on. So with that being said, ladies, we're gonna play some background music real quick and show you the roster for Thunder Profiteers, and then we'll come back for battle plans as well Wells deployment. So let's go ahead and talk about deployments as well as battle plans real quick. So over here in the upper right hand corner is where Thunder's Profiteers is located at. At the front is Garrett Allenson, my pilot, followed by Kaz Gandrax, Gear, my soldier. I have Thor Bjorgen Thundrick, my commander in the back, followed by Dead Eye Lund, my medical officer, as well as Enric Iron Hell, my engineer. Meanwhile, over here on the left hand side in this deployment area, we have two plant mutants, as well as two plant mutants down over here as well. Now the plant mutants do have nine life. They also have six movement, four combat, four reaction, as well as one intelligence. They are equipped with uh, twisted limbs and vines, which gives them plus one to their combat score that you have to worry about. At the same time, I do have to worry about spore te uh, poisonous spores in this battlefield. Every single time I make a combat action, i got to roll a d12. On a roll of a 9+, plus, something terribly gone wrong, and poisonous spores spread throughout. Also, at the same time, I also have to roll every single time I make a movement test to see if I fall into some hidden tar pits. And if I do, my characters lose their movement characteristics and have their combat score reduced. They can break free if they do pass a reaction test, so... 
I do have my work cut out for me on this one. So with that being said, we go directly to the top. My plan, oh, sorry, not to the top. First of all, some of my battle plan. First of all, I'm going to try to try to divide these guys up as best I can. I plan on fighting pretty offensively, taking my team and having maneuver through the ruins of Space Station Zero. Hopefully I can take out this team here and deep six those guys because these Plemians do have some work they got to go through. They do have to go around terrain and go through doorways and stuff to try to catch up with me. So hopefully I can just kind of speed through, take out these two Plemians here, and then take out the very last two at my own leisure without losing any of my fighters to poison spores or to dart pits. So with the battle plan over with, we go directly to the top of turn number one and I get to go first because I have activation. So we're back at the end of turn number one, and as you can see, a lot of dynamic movement pretty much took place right here on the right hand side of the table. So for my very first activation, I activated uh, did, uh, Eric Ironhell. Eric Ironhell actually pulled off a, a double movement using the logistics expert from uh, Durg Thunderick. Actually moved twice his movement allows directly on the right hand side of the battlefield. They actually took aim with his weapon actually opened fire directly onto this guy as well. I think managed to put six wounds on him, also using his weapon training ability in order to make that happen, so that part was epic. I then got to activate a second time row because I managed to steal the activation on that when I moved Kazgan Drax gear directly into this middle chamber so that way I could intercept these two uh, plant men, uh, plant mutants, so that way I could take those guys out as well. Now the plant mutants of course, the very first one to activate was this one. He actually moved a double movement directly towards Enric Ironhill because he's the closest one to him. And then from there of course then activated Dead Eye Lund. Dead Eye Lund actually moved out of directly out of the corridor so that way he has a good line of side growth with this plant mutant match but two more wounds on him which is absolutely fantastic. The second plant mutant that was originally down here in this plum area moved along this corridor directly towards Kaz Gandraxkewer since he's the closest target to him. Meanwhile on the top of the screen over here Bjornrick Thunderick actually moved out of the corridor and actually took a pot shot on the first plant mutant put his six wounds on him who was originally down in this area originally. Of course, that plant mutant, of course, moved up, saving with the second one, moving up as quick as they can directly towards Bjorg and Thundrick. I then had Garon Allison open up with his guns as well. Unfortunately for me, though, I do flub my rolls on this attack, so most attacks came from Bjorg and Thundrick. And that pretty much makes up turn number one for this one. So we're turn number one over with. We go directly to the top of turn number two, and I get to go first because I have activations. And that takes directly to the end of round of turn number two. So as you can see right here on the bottom here, combat between Kazgan, Drax, Curie, as well as his plant mutant, pretty much ended up being a push. I did manage to put two wounds on him, which is absolutely fantastic. And luckily for me, the plant mutant was able to get past my armored force save, so because that would not have really happened up here. Meanwhile, Enric Ironhill, however, actually was able to finish off the very last of the uh, wounds left on this plant mutant, so that's one down, so that part was absolutely fantastic. Meanwhile, up here on the top of the screen, Bjorn Kendrick actually fell back over the back corner, managed to pass his tar pit save, at the same time I managed to put the very last few ones to kill off that plant mutant as well. Now originally, this plant mutant actually moved up directly to where Garrett Allison was located at. He did try to take a swing with his vines, unfortunately for this plant monster though he actually failed. I then took Garrett Allison and actually had to move behind the uh, plant mutant over here, have an open fire match, but two moves directly onto him, so that part was pretty epic. Meanwhile, Dead Eye Lund, of course, the very last guy to activate, he tries to open fire directly to the plant mutant. Unfortunately for me, though, I flung my rolls, just rolled a bunch of odd numbers, so because that uh, um, Dead Eye Lund was able to hit the target at all. But I did roll high for my roll for the poison spores because I did suffer two wounds, so that part should be rough. All things considered, though, I can't really complain because half of the plant mutants are now dead, and uh, two of them are also partially wounded as well, so things are looking kind of up. So with that being said, we go directly to the top of turn number three. All right, so we're heading directly to the end of round number three. So first of all, Kazgan Drax Skewer, as well as Enric Ironhell, between the two of their attacks, managed to put eight wounds directly onto his very last plant mutant here. So he's got one more mutant before, uh, one more wound he left before this guy actually dies out. The same thing with the combined shoot between Garon Allenson as well as Dead Eye Lund, uh, managed to put this plant mutant all the way up to eight as well. Now, unfortunately for me, for Bjorgen Thunderick, he did fail his movement test. It's because I did get stuck in a tar pit, so he has one less combat resolution. He cannot move whatsoever. Uh, so because of that, he was kind of stuck. I did use some of my close combat attacks, even though I don't have a close combat weapon. But still, I was able to do much of anything with this guy as well. And even though Bjorgen Thunderick is kind of stuck, I'm not too worried about though, because this plant mutant, as well as this plant mutant, only have one life left. And then once that, that last hit point is taken up, I pretty much win the challenge. So with that being said, we go directly to the top of turn number four, and once again, I have a priority. And with that, we go directly to the end of turn number four. So first of all, for our first activation, Kaz Grand Drexkewer had no problem putting the very last one directly at this plant mutant. He then used his point-to-point -point teleporter move across the battlefield directly to the top of the table, in case we needed some extra help with this guy back over here as well. 
Now, of course, um, I'm actually get the initiative on this one. I managed to steal that one while rolling up my uh, die to do that. And Dead Island opened fire with his gun and managed to finish off the very last of the Clan Mutants, pretty much ending a challenge for the victory with Lindrick's Profiteers. So, that being said, we're going to go directly to the post game because this battle report is now officially over. That's it, man. Game over, man. It's game over. All right, so let's go ahead and talk about the post game real quick. So for my crew, Thundrix Profiteers of the Skyfarer, my shipping crew, I did manage to actually level up quite a bit. I earned two more additional experience points for Bjorg and Thundrick, so that way he'll be able to level up after his next scenario, which will be all kinds of awesome. However, the rest of my crew, Deadeye Lund, my medical officer, Kaz Gandrax, Gura, my soldier, Enric Ironhelm, my engineer, and Garon Allison, my pilot, all of them leveled to level three, meaning they get plus one to either their combat, their intelligence, or their reaction scores. So let's go ahead and talk about exactly what I did for these guys. So first of all, for Did I Lund, I increased his intelligence stat by one, giving him intelligence six. At the same time, Kaz Gandrax, you were also leveled up. I also gave him plus one to his combat score, so now he's combat score seven. Enric Iron Helma Engineer, I increased his reaction score from a five to six plus, and I did exactly the same thing for Garen Ellison, increasing his uh, reaction score by six plus as well. Now, I know a lot of people might be wondering why did I didn't increase my combat score, and the reason why is because my combat score is pretty good already for my crew members. Plus, a lot of my crew members also have energy missile weapons, so they ignore armor. They also have got three plus to their attacks, so no harm, no foul there. So I'm really pretty satisfied the way they're going. I do have to admit, having that armored force six up ability for my uh, crew has been saving my life on this one, especially against the plant mutants. I got really lucky I didn't have to suffer any poison attacks, so that part was excellent as well. At the same time, I did manage to secure myself another uh, the anti venom uh, uh, syringe. So because I have new have anti toxin, I gave that to Dead Eye Lund, my uh, my uh, medical officer, and basically I get plus two dice for making a life challenge test against chemical attacks so that's gonna be really helpful because that's been popping up quite a bit in these challenges in uh, space station zero as well now from here of course I will be moving on to my next challenge my next challenge will be a weapons locker so I'm really looking forward to see exactly what happens there hopefully I can score some weapons for myself at the same time since I do have my weapons uh, secondary objective for my team hopefully I may get a reward for that one as well so that's good for this week, guys. As always, please feel free to like, comment, and or subscribe. Your guys' input is invaluable to us as always. Also, check us out on Facebook, Instagram, and blogger.com for all the latest, greatest hobby news related to this channel. That's good for this week, guys. We'll catch you guys next one. Peace out and stay classy.